Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.1. In this episode, I've been doing a lot of building things. And uh, it's gotten really complicated and there's all sorts of stuff that I'll introduce you to. Um, I've got some extra stages there. Uh, first of all is this. You might have recalled my Lackluster Labs transport from the previous episode that I decided not to use because I was not having very good batting average. Well, I decided not to have such a large version of it to start off with. Uh, that version had an extra crew cabin that would carry more Kerbals and also another set of these fuel tanks and a whole bunch of engines. But in terms of landing it on the surface of the moon, I figured it'd be too tall. And if you've watched my Realism Overhaul series, you know I haven't been having much luck with tall landers. So, I decided to go with a stout craft like this. Its engines are these, and they are, um, they are these, uh, not those. Those are similar, but not the same. These Lax LE60R MOT uh, radial liquid fuel engines. They provide 80 kilonewtons each, 270 sea level, 320 in vacuum. 900 cost, uh, altogether seems fairly reasonable, a vectoring range of 2 degrees. Only 0.5 tons though, so that's really good. And uh, so I've got a total of 6 of them, 3 on each side. And since they're gimbling, that's good. And yeah, otherwise uh, we've got uh, little uh, end caps here. Everything on the bottom here has a max temp of 2000, and that's deliberate because I'm trying to have this be able to re-enter without any other heat shield which would be good for reusability too. Um, we've got all these air brakes to help make sure that we slow down properly but we would be using the engines in order to actually land. Uh, taking a look at the Delta V situation uh, what we have is 4168 in the vessel itself and then we have a little booster. The reason we have a booster is so that the vessel can not only make orbit but also transfer to the moon and make orbit around the moon. So that is the goal there. Um, this is an SRB uh, because we need a lot of boost and it's the simplest thing and of course with procedural SRB I could shape it exactly like I want so I have you know a custom amount of thrust and uh, yep and actually, the procedural SRBs have better ISP than the stock SRBs, so... Uh, well, anyway. Um, they also have about a, a quarter of uh, gimbling, quarter degree of the gimbling, but that's not enough for me, so I added these procedural liquid tanks and twitch engines is what we've got at the bottom there. They look like spark engines, but that's because I tucked them in. So it's got landing legs, it's got uh, parachutes, and stage recovery says that it can recover at 5.2 meters per second. Uh, so yeah, of course using an SRB with a crewed transport isn't a thing you'd normally expect from me, but this was really cheap <laughs> and easy to recover, so there's that. I did try to build something that was a little bit more well, uh, it didn't have an SRB on it, let me put it that way. I can't say it's a little bit more legit. Uh, mainly because I was using these aero spikes. Well, they're called air spikes. Um, uh, I think it's this one. No, no, it's actually it's a larger brother. I don't know why they're separate. But anyway, um, yeah, this morale one. Uh, so 500 kilonewtons, 290 sea level, 340 vacuum, uh, gimbal range one degree. I mean, certainly it would have worked. Uh, we probably should put some more fuel on because the sea level thrust is reasonably high and we could get it farther. And it's, of course I've got parachutes, I've got lander legs just like with the SRB in order to recover these. The trouble is I haven't really locked the stock aerospike yet and I felt that using these would not be legit. I mean they cost a lot and they have plenty of mass but still I'd like to only use the aerospikes after unlocking the stock one. So, uh, speaking of which, we really do need to get to doing research to unlocking that stuff. Uh, and that's just a matter of sending probes out. In Kerbal Alarm Clock, I've added all the transfer windows, and you can see we've got a Moho one coming up out of all things. You, you know, that's uh, 
that's got to be a pain all on its own. Now, once we get this over to the moon, we have to refuel it. It can't land without refueling first. And so, even if whichever version we use, we need to do the refueling. And so, I needed to build a refueler. Okay, so this is the tanker launch. And I made this way too complicated. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, the fuel that it's supposed to deliver is in this locked tank in the center. And then uh, in the middle here and on the sides connected to the LV-909, we have the transfer fuel. And that's 1,322 meters per second to go to the moon, uh, make orbit around the moon. I'll use uh, some of the fuel and RCS to maneuver to uh, meet up with the target and transfer the fuel and then it'll come back home and that's the part where we have a lot of other stuff I mean of course it's got solar panels communication but when it comes back to Kerbin we want it to come straight back down and be recoverable so that we don't lose the money uh, it's tough to make it reusable because we, we're gonna have to send the tank up anyway so we'd rather just bring it back so I put a heat shield these, these inflatable floats actually have a lot of uh, heat resistance, so it's okay if they poke out a little bit. And, of course, it's going to land heat shield side down, hopefully. <laughs> and so we have the parachutes on this side. Though, I think this side will be heavier because of all the engines. So the parachute's going to have to yank it in order to orient it properly. But, yeah, we have huge floats to make sure that it stays upright in the water. And we will be aiming for water though. We've also seen things uh, land on land with floats and that work out too. Okay, well this is a fairly heavy contraption. I mean, it's delivering like 30 tons of, uh, what, um, well this uh, fuel tank is 31 tons. And it's trying to deliver that to the moon. So, well, and potentially to other locations uh, depending on our needs so that is I mean Minmus is probably the main thing um, here we have an SRB because uh, this is the only part of this that we intend not to recover uh, so it'll be fine to have an SRB uh, at the top here we have a reaction wheel to make sure the SRB is pointing the right way and um, yeah, it has the quarter degree of gimbling as well that the procedural SRBs have. And then we have a core and then four side boosters. Uh, these side boosters I didn't notice before, but I was looking for just this sort of... Th okay, you go away. Um, these are called linebacker solid fuel boosters. They provide 3,500 kilonewtons, 190 C level, 225 vacuum, 5 degrees gimbal range, and it says supermassive booster designed to be recovered after jettisoning. So, that's what we've done. We've got a lot of parachutes, we've got a controller, we've got separate, we've got drogue chutes, and if you take a look, uh, 6.1 meters per second is what they can be recovered at with all the parachutes. So that's a little bit harsh to have all those parachutes, but these cost 15000 apiece. piece. Um, granted, the solid fuel is 7200 of that, so what we're, we are recovering is 7800 really. So not that much. Well, except we have to include the cost of the parachutes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll see about that. The core is also supposed to be recoverable. It's an interesting mix of engines down here. We've got five of the Robin engines, which provide 480 kilonewtons, but they don't have gimbling on them. So we also have uh, four of the swivels. So five Robins, four swivels. It's sort of a Falcon 9 kind of thing. It's got a locked tank down here. See, it is locked. And it's got the little Werner thrusters. It's got parachutes just in, well, it's got parachutes because I don't want to have to manually bring it down. I want uh, stage recovery to deal with it. And so I was giving, uh, throwing it a bone there. Uh, 6.8 meters per second. And uh, we could, you know, uh, try and boost it back using the locked fuel. And try and do all the things. 
that's an option, especially since the SRB here does not last very long. It only has a 50 second burn, so it should be done with by the time we need to turn to this stage in order to guide it back down. So that's a possibility. But yeah, so that's a complicated issue. Now, I mentioned the fact that we need to get some science and that we'd be launching probes to do that. So, having this SRB, I decided to see what kind of launcher I could make with just one SRB since they do have gimbling. And, well, I'll show you what I built. Okay, well, I have named this the Devastator Rocket. I don't know why. Could have named it Linebacker after the SRB. But uh, this is just a dummy payload right now, and it's floating. And it is a 20-ton dummy payload. So this can get at least 20 tons to orbit. It uses a skipper on this stage. It might have been more fun to have a second stage SRB, actually, come to think of it. Um, I will consider that. But, yeah, I think a liquid upper stage will make make it more efficient. This isn't the most efficient setup I could have come up with because the initial thrust to weight ratio is 1.77. Well, I mean that has its benefits and drawbacks. You can see we are trying to recover the stage, stage with all the parachutes. 6 meters per second is what it says that will be recovered with. So, well, that's about what we need. So we've got this rocket. But, rather than launch anything just yet, the first thing I want to do is transfer that probe that we put around the moon to scan the moon over to Minmus. And that's because we have three contracts to fulfill. Biome scan of Minmus, low resolution altimetry scan of Minmus, fuzzy resources scan of Minmus. After we do that, we will launch the tanker first. And then after we launch the tanker, we will launch the crew transport. Okay, so that is the agenda. All right, so here we are with our little scanner pro, and I've plotted out a rather complex series of maneuvers because we only have 568 meters per second in order to rendezvous with Minmus. So, yeah, but first I did time warp to make sure that we scanned as much of the surface as possible. Again, um, I, I haven't actually looked into the whole um, how do we see carbonite like this thing. Um, Maybe I need the narrowband scanner. Uh, don't worry about it right now. We've got a lot to do anyway. So um, scanning w will occur. Don't worry. Uh, so the first maneuver is 158.6 meters per second. That's, that's basically just to dump us out into Kerbin space. And then we have a maneuver in Kerbin space taking 152.7 meters per second to get our Minmus transfer. And then finally at Minmus... Um, well, uh, it doesn't want to show me Minmus, but anyway, uh, we have a 153 meter per second maneuver to get into orbit. So summing all that up, that's about 100 and, uh, 460, 470 meters per second, so within our budget, assuming I do everything properly. So let's hope I do everything properly. Uh, here we go to the first maneuver node. Uh, Okay, well, within 0.1 meter per second should be all right for that one. Okay, out of Moon Sphere of Influence. Now, we don't want to pass the point where we have our mo MOHO transfer. So, two days, two hours, and seven minutes. I think we'll try that Devastator rocket with a MOHO probe. Well, it looks like our carefully plotted maneuvers are now off. <laughs> Uh, that just figures, doesn't it? Okay, anyway, uh, at least I know the basic idea of how that one works. I mean, that's orbit. So, what do we have to do to fine-tune this one? Well, as usual, it's gonna cost a bit more. Well, it's a moon periapsis of 153. I think that'll do the trick. Again, taking 100, uh, well, Taking four, uh, 30 days there, yeah. Okay, that one as spot on as I could get it. So, next is just getting into orbit around Minmus. Mm, focus view. It is uh, polarish, the approach. And. 
keeping it sort of high for the scanning purposes 150 meters per second so we will have enough but let's add that alarm so we don't forget scan right and now let me build a moho probe which takes a lot of delta v i don't know if i can make it let's see let's see how much delta v i can pack into as small a probe as possible all right the moho scanner is built and as you can see it has a total of 12,200 meters per second to work with and in my experience that that is helpful but not necessarily a clincher <laughs> moho is a tough one and so we've got numerous stages. We've got a stage with four of the ant engines. That only gives 880. It's for final adjustments, really. And uh, you can see we're carrying the big survey scanner, orbital telescope, magnetometer boom, uh, of course, uh, communitron for communication, uh, mystery goo, and uh, solar panels, and a thermometer. Uh, thermometer and also this multi-spectral imaging platform. We don't have any contract for MOHO so yeah we're just going over there and then we have another stage with the Spark engine, another stage with the Terrier engine, another stage with the Poodle engine and so yeah we're just using all the engines after the Poodle is the Skipper engine and then after the Skipper is this booster the linebacker and so the only part that's actually recoverable is the linebacker. And that is the plan. It's a straight rocket. It's 2.5 meters all the way except for that little bit there. Um, yep. So let's get to it. All right. Here we are with this distinctly unkerbal rocket. Throttle up. SAS is on. And let's hope that gimbling works for us. Here we go. Only 210 electric charge. We do have the solar panels, but I don't know if maybe I should have packed a little bit more than that. Very smooth, actually, this, this SRB. I should have started tilting earlier. Okay. Skipper. We really don't need to be going up very much now. Not the most efficient launch profile, but I guess the SRB will return close to home. Oh, what's the message we got here? Uh, we have escaped the gravitational influence of the moon. Just sworn we've done that before, but okay. No, I guess we haven't in this series. Huh. Okay, uh, fairing set. All good. Before I forget, let me get the antenna tuned. Oh, we've got a message. And yes, it recovered the SRB. 18,000 funds recovered. Um, most of that was actually the parachutes. <laughs> now, the parachutes cost more than the actual SRB, which is tough, actually. Okay. Actually, this is perfect. Um, so, well, not quite perfect. The periapsis is a little bit higher than I'd like. But we've got a uh, orbital apoapsis. This is going to descend back down. And the poodle will complete orbit. So that's fine. Let's coast to apoapsis. Come on. Okay, so uh, probe core should be hibernate and warp auto. Prograde. Okay, that is good enough for orbit. Uh, let us plot for MOHO. Okay, so I have a transfer plotted, but I don't know how much delta V it's going to take once we get there. That is the problem. So first of all, we're going to do an initial burn here in 18 minutes. And this is going to cost 1,784.5 meters per second. And then assuming we do that right, Always a big assumption. We have a mid-course adjustment of 1,153.7 meters per second in 80 days. Of course, I'm not going to handle that in this episode because we have other things to do. So that will be on the alarm clock. And then finally, 
our uh, moho periapsis there is 185 kilometers so that's a pretty good periapsis but when I tried to plot well let me just uh, focus view um, maybe it'll let me this time mm, nope it's not letting me create a maneuver node here is the problem so yeah I apparently I can't check what kind of Delta V I can expect to spend once I get there I think we should have enough I mean uh, with the burns we've plotted we'll still have like 5,000 meters per second left hopefully it's not gonna take more than that one thing we do have to watch out for is electric charge so before I do anything else let me extend the solar panels okay ignition and on we go well I don't think the timing of that could have been done any more precisely we should have done about half the delta V before the node and half after okay 0, 0.0 alright next maneuver in 80 days and let's see its effect it seems to be advertising a 973 kilometer approach there let's fine-tune that and maybe we'll get to see oh we do want it to be polar okay so that's 154 no I can't make I was hoping that now would let us make a maneuver node but nope Okay, so approaching Moho in 118 days, let's add the alarm for the node. All good. All right, so let's go to the VAB and launch the next thing. Okay, so we are going to launch tanker launch one, and we just tested one of these boosters in the previous launch and recovered it just fine with uh, the amount of parachutes that you see on these. Uh, except uh, these do have a reaction wheel and controller for uh, no apparent reason actually um, actually you know if they work without that maybe I should just take that off and save the save the risk there because that is a risk that we'll lose you know just in case we lose the boosters because they collide into each other or something no point having those on okay so and of course we've got separatrons on that's nominal and the real question is the core stage which has the nine engines at the bottom and that let's recalculate okay so these are the boosters six meters per second the core stage is reading 7.6 meters per second with a 92.95 percent recoverable rate and that's a bit harsh and also it's going to be going quite fast now again we can do the boost back with the lock fuel and the silver tank at the bottom here and maybe we'll try that we'll see okay this uh, there's a lot of auto strutting going on here of course so we'll see how that works too yeah alright <sighs> this is an expensive one but if we can launch this this will be good this will be good for future endeavors I'm thinking especially about the honey badger type command thing which might go here it's about the right size okay let's go okay that that really is looking like a legit rocket but that might be worrisome in you know stockish Kerbal I mean at least stock system Kerbal because you expect stouter rockets but that is uh, that's quite a rocket huh okay here we go and now I should point out oh um, for some reason I'm seeing a flame effect going on here um, I've seen that bug before I think it's on the um, on these Robin engines and I, uh, yeah, I, I've seen that bug before. At least, as long as the other engines don't have the problem, it should be fine. Uh, it's a little bit disconcerting, but um, I guess it's worth pointing out that 
we are going to air start the core's engines, so we're not going to light the core on the ground. Only the four boosters light on the ground. Okay, and that's thanks to the fact that they do have gimbling. So here we go. Launch. Alright. We'll have Smart ASS try and handle this. Careful. It's wiggly. Smart ASS is. Pretty sure it shouldn't be so wiggly because I felt how the SRBs handled things last time. I mean the one at, uh, SRB and it was pretty smooth. Okay, air starting the engines. Okay, SRB set. Okay, they are free. There's not a whole lot of gim there's only four gimbling engines and then four non-gimbling engines. Uh, five non-gimbling engines here. This is actually a pretty satisfying sound we've got here. Okay, fairing set. Very good. Okay, all nice and flat. Should actually shut that down there. The SRB can handle the rest. Yep. Okay. Uh, set. Okay. And well, uh, I guess we. I guess we can do the boost back actually. Right. Now. <laughs> it looks weird, but okay. Um. Uh, no, this is the fairing. No, uh, that, yes. Uh, retrograde, RCS on. Let's see how, whether we have enough for a boost back. It doesn't look like it, actually. <laughs> this is weird. Maybe I should reconsider using these, uh, Robin engines if they've got this problem. I forget how to fix it though. I mean, I've seen it before, but I don't know how to fix it. No, I wanted uh, landing guidance. Shall I set? Yeah. Okay, so. Whoa. Well, um, we're closer. But uh, that was definitely not enough to get us all the way there. Thank goodness it has parachutes. Okay, we have to switch to the main mission now. Okay, we are still in the atmosphere and... Uh-oh. The nozzle's in the wrong place. This is not nominal. Okay. Oh, crud. Um, we have a procedural SRB failure. Well, I didn't see that one coming. It is an SRB. NASA does not have to face problems like this. No, it does not. It does not have to deal with the SRB nozzle deciding to go into a different place. No, it does not. Please run out before we get to the thick part of the atmosphere. We could still do a re-entry test. Wow, that's... oh, it's all bad. This stuff is all... Hmm. Well, I think we should uh, not use procedural SRVs anymore. Yeah. My fault for trying to ignite it even though the SRB... cone was obviously displaced. Um, bright side? Uh, we did recover the boosters. We'll see if we recover the core. But our payload, our very complicated and expensive payload, mind you. 
Uh, well, uh, you know, if it can survive through this, it's still gonna die. <laughs> Um, I don't know, maybe the floats can really take a heavy bounce, I don't know. That's a weird sort of situation. Uh, we've got sort of quantum advanced inline stabilizers. Got, oh, well, there's only supposed to be one, mind you. It's not supposed to be two advanced inline stabilizers. It's just not sure of the location of the advanced inline stabilizer right now. That's why I said it was quantum. There's a superposition kind of thing going on here. Oh, I don't have communication with this, so I couldn't deploy the floats even if I wanted to. Oh well. Well, this was definitely a glitch with the SRB nozzle being dis- Oh, I have communication now. Um, deploy. I don't know where it can deal with anything. Deploy. Deploy. This, it'd be real good if you guys, um, um, you know what, off. Um, wow, uh, the way it's jittering like that, I don't think, um... Well, that's probably for the best. I actually haven't seen it go in red before. Um, okay, recover vessel, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna recover. Okay, uh, close. Well, I guess no recovery possible. Um, oh, uh, so, oh wait, uh, that was a real mount parachute. Uh, so some bits of it were recovered by stage recovery. Yeah, some loose parachutes. Well, uh, Terrier got destroyed, not too surprising. I guess we always get the parachutes back unless they explode. The Terriers, not so much. Some nose cones, solar panels, lots of debris, stack decoupler, procedural SRB. I believe that would have been the faulty stage. Oh, and this is the core, isn't it? Yes, the robins and the swivels. Yep, uh, so we recovered that. Stage value 91,000, our total refunds 90, uh, 79,000. Uh, mainly because of distance, but also we knew that we were going to be coming in faster than 6 meters per second, so a bit of a deduction for that. So not too bad, I mean, considering what the nominal cost of the thing was, I mean, I think we only spent maybe 60000 on it. Okay, well, this is a little bit weird, but I think this is the best solution here. It's, well, it's, it was going to be more expensive than the SRB one way or another. It was either going to be this sort of setup or something else, which was weird, or the skipper. And if we put a skipper, it'd probably be the same price, but we wouldn't get uh, the same kind of thrust to weight ratio. So right now it's 53,000 for the payload and the fairing, and this is about 14,000. What we've got here is four thud engines. Uh, they have their own little fuel pallets. I have dumped some of the LFO partly because it's clipped, but also partly because I don't want it burning for too long. Because, well, really I, I could just leave this portion up to um, stage recovery, but on the off chance I want to switch to it, I want that option. Uh, but of course here we have a hammer booster that has been scaled up to 2.75 meters. Now, scaling up is not generally a good idea because while, uh, well, because the thrust scales by the square of the dimension, the mass squares by the cube. So, I don't know, I, I think that tweak scale does that properly. So, scaling down is generally more beneficial than scaling up. But here we have no choice because the only 2.5 meter-ish booster that we have is the linebacker, which we've already seen before. And uh, that's not really suited to this kind of stage. Uh, it's too bad that we can't rely on the procedural SRBs, which are of course the ideal thing in this sort of situation. Um, there was the option of these air augmented solid boosters, which only cost 200, which is nifty. Um, 
but I don't know, it didn't seem to be giving much delta V and thrust. So um, I tried putting those on alongside the skipper, for instance, in order to give more thrust to weight ratio, and that didn't work out. Well, it's not quite the slick rocket that we had before with those odd little pods on it. I could have come up with some other solution, but this will do for now if it works. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on. And I don't know if I should use Smart ESS. I think maybe I'll control it on my own. Uh, Smart ESS seemed to wiggle too much. Okay, let's go. These are really, really, really quiet SRBs. I mean, I like them. They're exactly what I wanted from SRBs. The problem with the stock SRBs is that they have too little thrust. They're just not proper SRBs, at least as far as I feel. These just need more noise. I mean, it's not right that when we ignite the core engines, those are louder than these. Okay, core engine ignition. separation. Uh, we've got a complicated thing going on here, that's not right. Okay, fairings. Okay, good. Was a bit worried they might hit those tanks there. Okay, alright. Set. Okay, and no, 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 yes. All right, retrograde. Well, this will at least get closer to the KSC, so that'll improve our recover recoverable funds. Tell you what, I'll even save 400 meters per second or so and uh, we'll pretend that it's landing on a barge somewhere. I think that's fair. Actually, uh, considering it turns so far away from where it's supposed to be, let's ignite the liquids first. Now we can use them to hold things. And I don't want prograde necessarily, I want. Up, 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 up. And SRB ignition. That's a good combination. This is not a good situation right here. Uh, not exactly a disposal trajectory. I, I don't know what to make of this. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, this now has a periapsis of 62 kilometers. I don't think it's going to be going away properly, but let's move on. Okay. And we will coast to apoapsis. At least that's in front of us and not behind us. Okay, that is an orbit. Since we're going to be transferring anyway, I don't need to be too particular about that. Um, tell you what, uh, we'll uh, have this hangout and we'll be transferring it next time. Let me quickly try the launch of our crewed vehicle. I know this, this is probably a bad idea, but uh, let's, get, let's get all our launches out of the way in this episode. Since I introduced all the vehicles at the beginning, I just want to try it out. Alright, so back to the Space Center and we'll try to launch it. Okay, well we'll really be committed um, on this launch one way or another. I uh, would point out that they are only happy with this habitat for seven days. 
they're okay with supplies for 15 days even though I don't think there are any there, there are no supplies on here but I guess they're alright with that for 15 days camels they are uh, electric charge um, well I mean it doesn't matter it has solar panels and all but um, yeah we will need to get them somewhere and quickly otherwise they'll turn into tourists and we're talking about Jeb and Bill here all right, throttle up, SAS is on. So SRB and then uh, four Twitch engines controlling this. The SRB has uh, 0.25 degrees of gimbal, so we are not going to uh, do anything except for have it point straight up for a while. Yep, okay. Uh, launch. I guess we could probably roll. That's safe enough. Just just straight up will be fine. We want this thing to land back down at the KSC anyway. That's why it's got lander legs. Wouldn't have lander legs, it was supposed to splash down. Okay, set. And now we can uh, sort of feel it out. These uh, have two degrees of gimbal here. That's holding it very well. Let's take stock of what we recovered. That's the core from the last launch the robins and the four swivels. Terminal velocity of 4 meters per second. That's because of the propulsive landing, so that's good. 80,000 refunded, so that the propulsive landing worked out. And one booster, two booster, three boosters, four boosters. And this is... Oh, this is the one we just left. Okay, great. So that was this vehicle's booster. Sure looks like something that should be named Hercules or something. It's a mean looking sort of fella. I should go up more and then coast to Apoapsis. I don't feel like this is the most efficient way of going right now. It does produce a lot of drag obviously. Okay, well there it is, and it's supposed to land directly on these things, so no lander legs. Well, I'm, I'm sort of pleased it worked out. <laughs> this could have gone fairly badly. Okay, 108 by 88, and that definitely leaves us with enough to transfer to the moon and get into orbit around the moon, which is the goal of this. And then it's going to be refueled at the moon in order to make its landing and then future adventures. Alright, well, we'll have to do that pretty much immediately in the next episode, because otherwise these guys are not going to be happy about it. So next episode, transfer the tanker over, transfer this over, and get operations started at our moon base. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.